Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. And I wanted to sit down with you all and get some ideas on whether you thought Unity can actually be saved or they can save themselves at this point. And look at some information from a previous Unity marketing executive on why this decision was made and my ideas on how it could have been better and otherwise. Now, I've been using Unity for over 10 years, so it's been a big part of my life. And it's sad to see that it's come to this point. And I'm sure we've seen we've seen a few things over the years that have started the ball rolling in terms of the cancelling the Gagaya project, acquiring certain companies that had an elusive past, whether or not it was their fault. But I made videos on those things in the past, too. But I think we've got to remember that there's some amazing people who work at Unity and they have thousands of staff who work on the engine daily. And it is one of the engines that support the most platforms across the most diverse set of tools with one of the biggest asset stores around, ultimately for developers to help developers achieve. And remember, if you are against this, I do have tutorials on bringing assets from Unity to Unreal. You can use all your other assets in other engines because usually terms allow it. You know, there's a lot of bundles out now to learn Godot, Unreal Engine, and I'll put all the links below to all the sales and everything that you can get hold of, because it might be something to help you in your future development. When a company goes public and executives take over, which don't have the hearts and minds, I guess, with the developers in a lot of ways, and they're not the ones that develop the technology, it becomes a little bit watered down and you never achieve the same goals as you did before. And as I just mentioned, with all the different avenues that you can use Unity for, you need so many engineers, you need to pay them. And without a revenue model which suits those, then you're losing out and it needs to change. I'm not defending that this decision was the best one to do. I wanted to look at Troy Kerwin's tweets on this matter. And he was a senior manager for corporate and strategy and developer Unity between 2018 and 2022, so there for four years. And he wanted to mention that he was working on the very early iteration on Unity's pricing almost a year ago, and he had some thoughts on the whole matter. And as I'd already previously mentioned, it's extremely expensive to build and support an engine, which has millions of developers across the world, over 25 different platforms, multiple devices, all across different generations, producing over 100,000 games every single year. And Unity have over 3,000 engineers working on everything like that. And 80% of Unity's user base don't pay anything at all. And Unity's ad service, which is, you know, when you put them into mobile games and such like, is highly profitable. And that was the way that they funded the business. And he suggests that the engine business is not profitable standalone. Then he was saying that the ultimate strategy was to look at looking at the low cost of the engine. How can they generate more revenue to increase the average revenue per user that they have? He even said that the runtime idea was a shock to him. And a year ago, that was completely off the table. So what happened and changed in that time? And as Troy looks at it, that because of the environment changing around everything, Unity did lay off a lot of employees. They've had a lot of hiring freezes and this model to sustain seats in, in terms of buying licenses or subscriptions to licenses doesn't allow you to grow very well with the introduction of AI that smaller teams can build better quality, ultimately leading to smaller profits. And he suggested that Apple's privacy changes pushed monetization towards in-app purchases rather than in-game ads. So therefore her Unity's original idea on how, or how they did make the most money. And then Unity integrated new services like the Unity Gaming Services DevOps and they've not been profitable enough because not enough people have adopted those methods. And then Troy went on to say that other platforms charge a really big revenue cut if you're based on the Apple platform and you place on Steam and even Unreal themselves have a 5 flat fee over a specific value so it would be hard for unity not to move over to this model if it was something that they could see as being profitable what i always think about unity compared to the unreal engine and epic games have had massive massively successful partnerships with microsoft xbox and had unbelievable AAA titles things like Unreal Tournament, Gears of War, and more recently Fortnite. So they've been able to drive the development of their engine directly around those AAA games and anything that they can bring forth within that to help developers succeed with either their asset store revenue models and being able to give out big grants are supported by those things because they're not supported by a necessarily public traded entity. And I think Troy makes a pertinent point because it's made the situation much worse. I've seen a lot of developers that were happy to pay more revenue towards something if there was a revenue share, even if it inherently was more. But ultimately, you've got to understand that everybody's confused over the situation 
and it's open to be manipulated in some ways and you've just got to trust that Unity will give you the installs and they'll be able to take whatever's pirated. It just, there's too many variables to count in this matter. Again, it's one of these situations where for most of the developers, it wouldn't be a risk and it actually saves money against a revenue share model. It's just in cases where you get an awful lot of traction in a hyper casual sense and those companies would end up losing out in that case. Now, Troy suggests something that what could they have done differently, which would have been a smart idea, that Unity could have offered an option of either per install or a revenue share for royalties. Whereas, as we already suggested, that over 90% of developers could go with the per install because it's technically cheaper over the royalty method, but then other companies who are going to make more or there was more variables tied to it, then the royalty method makes sense even if inherently they pay more because there's, it's easier to work out and easier to substantiate how that's going to affect your business. And I think a lot of it stems from the fact that this just came out of nowhere and there was no real plan. And a lot of Unity developers have come out to say that it seemed like something out of the blue. They tried to warn them not to do this. And I don't know why it's just been come out at this point. Now, whether in the future that we see investments from other large companies where you could see an investment or a buyout from Microsoft, Sony, Apple, Nvidia, or any other big tech company, because they're always interested in games and maybe having their own personal engine to work on, especially with Microsoft, because, because there's big partnerships between Unity, Microsoft, PlayStation, because you can port all your games over to console. I would expect to see something change because I've never seen backlash like this before. This is on the level of if people are aware of European football and they try to introduce a new Super League and then pretty much the entirety of the football world, whether that's fans, players, managers, everything like that, were against the idea of bringing in this league that only certain clubs could be in and it got pushed back and pushed away. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter and if you think that it's something that Unity can bring back from and you'd stick with it because remember Unity does offer an incredible amount of tools with an incredible asset store and everything else that's got going on. But a big thanks to all my patrons and everybody who comes to watch the video. Big thanks to Peter Steiner, Mike Cullen, Thanchu and Isidora Negri for their amazing support and thanks to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.